Hey, greetings, everybody. Um, I've been talking about, oh, we're, you know, we're playing a new game, we're writing a game. So I figured we would make a set of videos that talked about, you know, this new version of my game, Runebearer, which I've been playing with my uh, home group for like 25 years now, <laughs> in one form or another. Um, it's not a great game by any stretch. It's not like going to set the world on fire. It's not, you know, super new or innovative. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. I, I think it's a good solid game. I, I prefer it pretty much for most of my fantasy and strangely enough, my super hero needs. Um, but let's talk about it real, real quick. The, the, and I started gaming in the seventies with first edition D and D, um, you know, Base, Blue Book Basic first, quickly moved to uh, Advanced D&D, first edition. <clears throat> also in those days, uh, ended up playing in the 80s, a lot of champions uh, and hero system. And that sort of became our system of choice, including for fantasy. Um, that went up through college. And in college, I sort of started to muck with effectively a, a homebrew world, which, uh, which, which I called Bostonia, which frankly was probably a dumb name. It probably still is a dumb name, but I'm sticking with it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and the premise behind this was that it did indeed take place in the Northeast of the United States after a giant cataclysm, but like in say Thundar the Barbarian, that cataclysm not only wiped out most of humanity, um, but it changed the world inherently and made it magical somehow. Don't, don't, don't think too hard. <laughs> um, so what you have is you have a, a, a very typical fantasy world, but the underpinnings and the quiet, you know, the quiet background that the players, it, it depends on the GM, if the players want to engage with, they could or not. <clears throat> is that this is actually our world just buried over by something and then <clears throat> with magic overlaid on top. Um, and it's typically very subtle, but it does sort of underpin at least a lot of how, you know, when I run games and, and think of locations and things, I actually do think of them as real locations and then just s slap them on with a good paint of, 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 you know, whatever mystical trappings, um, you know, and, and, and go from there. But, but the, but that actually wasn't the impetus for changing from say fantasy hero, which is what we were playing at the time. Uh, we were, I was in college, we were playing as freshmen and we were playing this game. We we're playing fantasy hero. It was working just fine. Uh, in fantasy and hero system, by the way, uh, fantasy hero particularly, and I'll, I'll even go further and, and, third edition fantasy hero, which is actually really old. Um, it has just a, I feel a great, just physical combat system. Uh, and then fourth edition hero and that fantasy hero also great. Um, and fifth is fine. It's, 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 you know, and, and so on, but, but fit hero system in general, I feel has a very good physical combat system that takes into account a lot of things and, you know, wounding and knocking someone out and fatiguing, all that. And it does a very good job of all that. And I, I do love it. And the magic system is very flexible in that you can make pretty much any effect you, you would like to make with some caveats. Now, now that's where the impetus for run, making a, a, an actual game came from was at some point, the magic system to this world sort of started to seep into me, you know, as we played. And the idea was that magic was not a scholarly or learned thing, but more of a, um, almost more of a D what a fifth edition D and D warlock or sorcerer would be. It is your inherent power binding this power in the world, you know, through force of will or, spirit or or whatever it could be your you know your wit or whatnot so so a lot of the spells that i had in mind 
started to fall out of what Fantasy Hero did very well. Fantasy Hero can do a lot of things, and Hero System is very good at saying, oh, we, we, we can do every effect. But it's very bad at point-wise balancing those. Um, if you're not just outright doing damage or not just outright blinding someone, like if you're if you're outright not doing just a straight out combat effect, then balancing those effects became difficult and clunkier, and you almost had to start just writing your own rules to it. And at some point, I thought, hey, why don't we just write our own rules to this? <laughs> And that's where this game came from. And that that was a little bit before the year 2000 is when sort of Runebearer proper came came out. Um, it was after 88. I don't know the exact year, but it's been well over um, 25 years now. 1999 for sure. I think earlier than that, actually, we were out and about uh, making this game. And so so that's that's sort of why we made it, why I made it. Um, and I got some help along the way from, um, you know, from, from Scott, uh, from a guy named Tom Pope, who, uh, unfortunately I've sort of lost contact with, but a great dude. Um, you know, and he was, he was my partner in crime for a lot of this. Um, and people that have played along the way, uh, have, have sort of shaped this and, and helped me with this. So let's, let's talk about it a bit. We'll get to magic. That's not today. Today we're just going to make a, a simple enough character, and you'll see how that goes. So I'm going to dip my face off here. Um, so at its base, fairly straightforward. Um, there are seven stats. So you can see them over here on the left. I don't know if you can actually see anything or if I can ping that. I wish that'd be a good uh, thing to add to which McCall is like a hot key to ping your screen there but um but you'll see we got muscle skill toughness so pretty much you know in a D, &D term strength dex con right pretty easy you have awareness which is sort of a hybrid between a physical and a mental stat it is your reflexes and perception sort of rolled into one and then we have wit power and charisma okay so fairly easy fairly uh straightforward um the stat bonuses and i'm 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 sorry that i'm sort of vaguely adjusting uh the document as we go here stat bonuses are sort of on an old school DD, like a basic D, &D uh scale we're sort of assuming you're three to 18 <clears throat> and 13 to 15 is where you start get a bonus 16 and 17 you get a plus two bonus and we'll talk about that the, it's it's very straightforward in, in that sense. And then 18 is a plus three bonus um, to whatever it is that skill is going to manage for you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate stats. <clears throat> and we're going to use what we used in the current game. <clears throat> we want everybody's stats to be about the same. And so we used an array. So we're going to make, uh, let's just make a, a fighter. We'll start with that. <clears throat> um, and we'll use our, our lovely array here. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, and eight. So that gives you three plus ones and one minus one to deal with. You can swap two for one to move the stats around a bit. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> so let's assume that we want to be reasonably strong and reasonably tough. And you'll have to excuse me uh, for one second. Uh, reasonably strong, reasonably tough, as I said. So let's go, we'll start with just 15, 14. Muscle toughness will be the, the two main stats there. Uh, we'll give a th uh, 13 to skill, 12, 11, 10 charisma, 8 wit. We'll be not super clever. And then let's look at if we want to, so the main key, I think, to think about when you have this array is do you want to push for 16s? And we can get two 16s if we're willing to sell the farm, but we can get one fairly easily, and that's doing something like reducing our power to none. So we can do a two for one swap. That gives us a muscle of 16. And I think we'll, we'll stick there. 
So that makes that a plus two. These are plus ones. Everything else can be a plus zero, except for this width is gonna be a minus one. Uh, we could also lower charisma to eight, but that would give us two minus ones. Also keep in mind that every stat is actually useful in the sense that they all do touch some skills, but actually more to the point, your saving throws are just all based on your stats. So saving throw against poison would be toughness. Something like keeping your balance would be skill. Dodging a trap is typically going to be awareness. Uh, power is going to be a lot of magical effects as were charisma, because charisma is sort of your, not only your charisma, but is your spirit, your divine connection to the world kind of thing. Wit is probably one of the least used in terms of just outright saving throws, but it is a lot of, it's in a lot of skills. Um, so we're not going to be super clever at this guy, but he has a decent enough perception to hopefully not get caught up in pit traps and stuff like that. And he's going to be pretty bad on a lot of spell saves because this 8, 9, and 10 is not going to serve him well, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So those are our primary stats. And we'll name this guy, uh, well, because I do it all the time, Wordna. Just because. I don't know what template we're going to use yet. We'll get there in a minute. So let's do figured stats real quick to see. So hit points are your toughness, so 14, plus half of your muscle, round it up if it needs to be. So that's plus 8, 22 plus half of your power is 527, and then heroes add eight to that. So he has 35. Um, and then we do calculate a wound number, which is that divided by four. That is how much damage you take in one shot to take a wound. So it's close to 36 divided by four is a nine. So I usually write it like that, 35 and nine. So if he takes nine points of damage in any one hit, he's gonna take a wound, which could just kill him outright or Injure him or do nothing more than just the hit points. Uh, base defense is simply how low can your defense go? Um, the higher, the better. The, so, you know, so in, in the game, your defense will degrade as you defend from multiple attacks. And base defense is simply the lower limit of that. Unfortunately, it's six plus his awareness bonus or his whip bonus. He gets to choose. We'll take awareness bonus as zero. So his defense could go as low as six, uh, which is fairly low. Um, stats, uh, skills are going to range from eight to 14 or 15 for starting character. 14 probably is the highest if you really pushed it. Um, typically it's going to be like 12. So if you could imagine a 12 trying to hit a six, we'll talk about that. Um, but that's pretty low. Your dodge, which is your ability to dodge, say, missile attacks and spell attacks and so on, is your base defense plus one, so seven, plus your skill bonus um, or his power bonus. Actually, that should be, I think, an or. So there we go. <clears throat> so... Um, that's seven plus skill bonuses, one or power bonus. So we'll take the, so eight. So not great, but at least it is passable. And that's what I expect a lot of dodges to be at the beginning. Base move is five plus one for muscle skill or toughness above 13. So he has three of those. So his base move is eight hexes a turn. His initiative bonus is his skill and awareness bonus added together. So his is just plus one. So word note is plus one. And then his basic search, if he doesn't take a skill which helps him search for things, it's eight plus his awareness and wit bonus. Unfortunately, that's minus one. His search is pretty bad. He is not that perceptive. Um, <clears throat> we do have a carrying capacity. We might as well at least calculate that while we're here. We'll write it over here. Two times his muscle is 32 kilograms, plus his toughness bonus is makes it 33 plus his power bonus. So it's 33 kilograms is his, is his load. That's what he can carry without, that's what he can carry as a light load. Uh, no load would be half of that. 
and then a medium load is up to one and a half times that, two times that, up to two times the heavy load. Done. And that's the first part. That, that is stats. So we've done his stats, and he has a 16, 13, 14, as you can see, 12, 8, 9, and 10. And that gives him, eh, those figured stats. And I know that it's hard to tell what those actually mean, really. Like an average human has 28 hit points. All the heroes are going to have, well, I shouldn't say that. The average human has like 20 hit points. The average sort of named human has 28 because we give plus eight to effectively interesting people. Um, <clears throat> uh, so he has 35, so he's a little beefy. He is a little beefy. Um... So let's kill those stats for now, and then we will, uh, let's put up the template list. Oops, well, we, we got nothing, huh? I don't know where that is. Do we have it up? Let's see, template, there we go. So templates are effectively a skill package. And you pick one, you have to pick one. And we make these all the time for different types of characters. If someone came to me with a new idea, I'd be like, sure, sure, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's make a template for you. The idea is to tie you to the world fairly specifically um, in certain ways. And this is where you get the first sort of taste of the world. If, you know, um, you know, if you don't have the, the book of information about the world or whatever, this is at least gives you that, that taste, right? So the church is very important. You see, we have a lot of church templates with the, it should be the temple of Estra. So let me change that. And the Church of the Father. So there's the two, two gods, the Mother and the Father, Stratus um, and Estra. And so you can see some of these. The initiative of Estra, little sister, or a learned sister, has some magic. Um, and all these sort of come with a nice little blurb of sort of where they're at. We're not going to be a church uh, folk here. We're going to be. I mean, we could be a Templar, maybe. Maybe he was in the past. <clears throat> um, uh, but let's actually, yeah, let's actually go. We're going to go, and we're going to make him, let's make him a shield guildsman. How's that? We'll make word not a shield guild. So the shield guild is effectively, what we, I call him the Bostonian National Guard. They are effectively the king's guard, the king's army, but over time the king has sort of weakened, um, and the king is sort of effectively sort of like a high king amongst all of his barons, which are effectively kings of their own tiny kingdoms. So there's 14 of these baronies, which are, like I said, they're, they're run as their own independent states. The high king is typically one of those barons, or another one of the nobility, who is effectively given certain rights and responsibilities to settle disputes between them and so on. But he's fairly weak nowadays in Bostonian uh, history with the barons pretty much running the show and he sort of acts as a go-between. And the church sort of oversees the whole thing and they're truly the, the head of the show. It's, it's, it's a feudal theocracy uh, uh, mix, right? The shield guildsmen effectively now operate as sort of small mercenary companies dispersed across into all these baronies. They are typically hired by the barons to, you know, monitor the roads, keep towns safe, um, to allow the barons to have a you know smaller or or non-existent standing army while still you know, keeping bandits and goblins and uh, Talak, which are scary machine human hybrids, <laughs> um, keeping all those threats at bay. And so this guy spent years there and then got out, right? So he's going to be a spearman. So right here, shield guildsman. Shield guildsman, 30 fighters who are charged with protecting the interests of the nobility. They spend long months maintain, manning their garrison until a crisis occurred, and they're called to action by the local baron or king. Well-trained, disciplined warriors who can battle alone or in groups. 
So <clears throat> we are going to, and they have effectively some special spear techniques. So we'll we'll go with that. Um, so you'll see here that we have this whole list of things we have to take. So we're going to write all these down, and we're going to spend thirty nine points of fifty. You have fifty to start with, and you spend most of them in your template. That's actually by design. Um, you know, players will come to me occasionally and go, can I swap this one thing out? And sometimes I'll say, mostly, mostly I'll say yes. Um, but the idea is that you take a template to make character creation as streamlined as possible. We spend most of your points for you. And, but you still get to sort of wiggle around. And there's actually templates with uh, less points spent. So for instance, we could have just picked plain old fighter. I think there is just a plain old warrior in here somewhere. Yeah, that only spends 34 of your points and gets certain things. Um, or ranger. Well, it's still 42 points. It's still a lot of points. But I think these templates are good because they give us sort of a an overview of the world and what kinds of characters exist in the world. Let's fix that grammar uh, issue. Um, and so I do encourage folks to generally try to pick one or I'll make one for people if they need something special that we need to talk about. Um, or they pick a generic one like fighter, you know, and then they work off of that. So we're going to pick shield guildsman and we're going to write all this stuff down. So give me one second here. So there you go. We, we put all the stuff in our template over on our skill, our sheet here, and you can see gamble. Knowledge, Bandit Tactics, Goblin Tactics, Talak Tactics. So all the enemies that he would be normally uh, uh, facing as a Shield Guildsman, we, he, he knows about their tactics. He's a professional soldier, which means he can keep his gear in good shape. And, you know, if he needed to get hired on somewhere, uh, he has whatever, all the credentials and the, the CV to do that. Uh, tactics gives him uh, advantages in battle. And then he took... Uh, choose a weapon, and so I picked sword, shield, and spear as his three weapons. Pretty easy uh, choice there. We do have a talent to choose, which we'll save that for a bit. Um, we'll get that to that in a minute. But he does get one choice there. You'll notice he also got plus six hit points. So we added that to his hit point total. And he gets potentially medium armor. So that is armor with a defense, an armor value of three or four. Um, which largely takes three or four points off of any hit that he takes. So we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so let's figure out what, um, what these stats are here. Um, so Gamble uses power and wit. So let's calculate how good he is at gambling. So whenever you buy a skill, you get an eight in it. So we'll put eight just down the row here. And then you get your stat bonuses. So his stat bonus for this are is power and wit, which unfortunately he's not that great at. So his power modifier is zero. His wit is minus one. So he gets a minus one to his. So his base value is eight minus one. But because it's in his template, he gets plus two to it. And in fact, every one of these skills in the template, we're going to be able to do that. Plus two, plus two. So even though the template spends a lot of your points, the bonus is you are better at that than someone who purchased it outside of their template. Um, and so his final value for gamble is nine. Not great, his final value, same thing for uh, his knowledges. He's not that clever. And so all of his knowledges are a nine. And knowledge, so we can add additional knowledges for a single point. The knowledge skill itself costs three. You get one knowledge for free. Additional knowledges are one more point. Um, and I will put up here actually that he spent 39 points. Uh, 39 spent like that. Um, and usually what I tell people if they have extra points is, is toss them into a knowledge or a profession uh, and so on. Similarly, profession soldier, he could buy more professions underneath and they would be cheaper. Uh, Soldier is the, the first one's expensive. Um, so strength, uh, skill and toughness. 
he's pretty good at, so plus two. So eight plus two plus another two is 12. Uh, his tactics is awareness and charisma, so his leadership, not great. He's not bad at it, though, at 10. Uh, weapon sword is muscle skill. He gets a plus three to that because his muscle is pretty, he's pretty buff. And so he's a 13. In that and spear, we'll actually write that in, plus three. But his shield, because it's awareness and muscle? It doesn't look right. Did I miss, oop, did I uh, miscopy that somehow? Let's take a quick look. So let me, let's pull up the skill list. Awareness muscle. Don't like that. Um, I will stick with that for now. Oops, I just closed it, but that's fine. I, we'll, we'll get back to the skill list here in a minute. Um, let's get back to the template. Uh, muscle good, awareness not so good. He gets plus two in that then, and he ends up with a 12. Done. Uh, as you can see, so everything ranges between like an eight, typically, to something up to about a 14. If you had two 16s, you could, you could weasel a 14. Um, but again, getting two 16s is going to leave you weak somewhere else. And you can see. Um, so every role in the game... And we'll go into this more specifically uh, in our play example. Is a is a, a an opposed role, and I'm waving my arms around. You can't tell because you can't see me. Um, every uh, every role in the game is an opposed role. Um, you roll a d12, add your number. So in this case, the final value. So let's say he is trying to to win at gambling, right? So he rolls. He rolls a five. Let's say on his D12, he adds 9, he gets 14. That's what he tells the GM. The GM goes, hey, the difficulty for this check is a 10. As a for instance, that would be a moderately difficult check. Uh, I would roll, let's say I roll a, 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 an 8, plus 10, 18. He loses because his 14 did not beat an 18 or match an 18. Um, so largely... Uh, in the beginning of the game, you know, for, for basic checks, you're looking at things like sixes, sevens, eights, tens are hard, twelves could be, you know, difficult, and so on. A lot of combatants against them will have skills of ten, and so you can sort of get an idea that a thirteen is pretty good, a nine is okay, like a seven would be crappy, um, you know, or worse, you, you probably probably shouldn't even to some degree, have that skill <laughs> at that point. So we've only spent 39 points. We'll get back to his talent pick here in a minute. Um, but he only has 39 points spent, so he gets 11 more points to spend. So we're going to go to the skill list now and pull up the skill list. Um, let me do that. And let's see what else we want to buy. Um, now he might, you might be better off with maybe bow here instead of sword, but we're going to stick with it. We're not too, too worried. He's probably going to do most of his fighting with a spear. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let's switch that to bow. So let's say he needs a range option. Bow is awareness skill. So he gets an eight. That's only a plus one now though. And so he's down to an 11. So let's do that. And I will ditch my cam here for a second, and let's look at this skill list. So uh, I'm going to call this default. Um, so uh, what does he want to be able to do otherwise? I'm going to give him athlete. Now, everybody can roll athlete, but he, you know, the idea is he can run and jump a little better make leaps across, you know, whatever. It's muscle skill, which is pretty good for him anyway. He has a plus three, but notice his te uh, template value is now zero because he's buying these skills outside of his template. So he's only an 11. Whereas if it was in his template, if he picked something like a thief or some of them that had maybe athlete specifically, he would have like a 13. So he would, 
he's always two better if it's in your uh, if it, if it was in your past training. Uh, so that'll be three more points spent. So that gives him forty two points spent. I do like maybe beast lore just as a weird. That's wit though, so he's gonna suck at it a little bit. Like I like the idea of maybe he's trained like dogs, hunting dogs or something of that nature. What would his track be? Awareness skill. Let's go with let's go with that. Let's go with track. Let's say that he's uh, taken up maybe. So track is awareness skill. That gives him a an eight base plus one for stats, and then of course a zero for his template. So a nine in track. Um, that gives him forty five spent. He could get to. And then, you know, let's not do beast lore, but let's do survive. So I'm going to say he's sort of taken up maybe being a little bit of a tracker. Uh, survive is skill toughness. Eight plus two for his stats. Zero for his template gives him a ten. That's another three points spent, so 48 points spent. And so he can do things like, you know, climb easy obstacles, trees, stuff like that with athlete. He can survive in the wilderness. He's not particularly good at any one terrain because you can buy sort of extra terrain, like terrains as specialities. Um, he's sort of a novice tracker and he has two more points. And I think what I will do, so what is an extra profession cost? One, an extra job. So you'll see here we have licenses, which are different uses for your skills, um, or specializations, which give you bonuses with certain things. So we're going to take, I'm going to take, um, he could take a specialization of, of a terrain and get a plus two to that terrain, and maybe that maybe that would be helpful. So one thing too, so there's a couple things. So yeah, so every skill potentially has these adders, which allow you to then do different things. So for instance, for acting, if you take the license disguise, you are then able to use your acting skill to disguise yourself. If you take impersonate, you can use your acting skill to impersonate someone's voice or impersonate someone's mannerisms perfectly, right? And so if you had all of these, you could then be sort of consider a master of disguise. Uh, administrate license law. So you can effectively practice law. We also have things called specialization, which those give you effectively, you can pick a narrow category to get a plus two in. So gambling, he could take a narrow specialization in, say, poker and to get a plus two to play the one type of game. Um, <clears throat> this search here costs nothing. If you take certain skills, investigate, conceal, track, uh, traps, I think maybe, no. Uh, may, might might want to put that in there just because maybe that's a good, good one to have. Uh, and I'll put it in provisionally. And the game is changing as we go. I told my players to sort of buckle up. They'll be fine. Um, but he has track. Track has the search uh, 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 modifier to it. And so that means he can use this for his search. So he gets to put a nine search. And as track goes up, his search will go up. And other people, their search is going to go up way slower, if at all. But he, as long as he keeps tracking, his search will go up. Um, I'll put actually, or a skill. Like that, so that we know. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get him one of these specialties here. I'm going to get him, so let's, let's say survive. And let's say that his, his terrain that he survives in 
um, is going to be, so I'm going to go and insert a row there and put that and say, what about in the woods? <laughs> and right, and he gets plus two. It's a specialty of a speciality of survive. He survives normally at a 10. And survival is super useful for things like camping in the woods, right? Finding shelter. And without it, you cannot find a restful camp. You, you know, you you don't actually heal hit points or get spell levels back or anything like that. And so that is, that's it. So that is two points. I think survive, right, is a specialization terrain two. That's 50. And he's done. We do have to choose our, our thing, though, our talent. So let's go back to templates real quick. And let's look at the list that we have. We have keep away, long arm, mighty thrust, and pin. Phalanx and pin. Um... So these are just some templates. Oh, I don't have I don't have a, a, a talent list. Let me I'm gonna make a window capture here for you. Talent list. Okay, and there's our talent list. Um, and so well, you know, talents you can either get them at the beginning or get them as rewards throughout the game. They are little bonuses. They're like feats in D&D, but probably a little weaker than most feats in 5th edition. <laughs> um, they're there to sort of, you know, give you a little bit of special powers and sort of an interesting uh, interesting gig, I would argue. Um, make you fight better, etc. So what does our guy get? Our guy gets Keep Away, Long Arm, Mighty Thrust, Phalanx, or Pin. One of those. So keep away says, if you're wielding a long weapon or approached by an opponent, you may preempt them and use your action to attack. If that attack does any damage, your opponent's staggered and immediately ends their turn. That's actually really good because that spear he's going to be able to use. Um, <clears throat> now, if you have no action remaining, you may spend an inspiration. Every character starts with two. You get them sort of, when the adventure is done, you can recharge your inspiration. And you can use keep away as a free action. So that's actually very powerful. Uh, Mighty Threat Long Arm is reach weapons get an additional reach. Also really sort of good. If he was, that's interesting. If he was fighting with a group, be sort of fun to have a spearman in the back, literally thrusting down uh, as, the, as two of his, his comrades held the line. Um, and there are reach weapons, so literally a long spear is reach one, so you can attack two hexes away from you, as opposed to just into the adjacent hex. That would make it sort of stupid. It would be reach three, <laughs> but but sure. <clears throat> uh, and then mighty thrust. When using a reach weapon, you can take a minus three to hit, and in addition to attacking your target, you attack the enemy behind him as well, sort of jamming it through both of them. That's sort of fun. Phalanx is the ability, if you're standing adjacent to an ally, you both get plus one defense. And if that ally also has Phalanx, you get a, an additional plus one defense. So imagine a, literally a Phalanx of fighters that all had this power, and then their defense goes up. So instead of blocking with his shield at a 12, he would block at a 13, and, and so on. Pin, he can wound his target. If he wounds his target, he can choose to leave your spear and pin him to the ground or whatever's behind him, and then mobilizes him until he frees himself by pulling the weapon out, which does a D6 of penetrating damage and bleed. Let's make sure that we know that it's penetrating, because that is important. That's no armor, effectively, what that means. Um, so good, good to know. And bleed is you lose a hit point around, effectively, until it is staunched somehow. I think I'm going to take keep away. You know, if he's out there by himself, the ability to stagger a target is actually, you know, stopping his turn is actually pretty darn powerful. Um, but as, I mean, honestly, as far as it goes, that's then, that's it. 
Like we have, we have done everything you need to do to sort of make your character. Now we need gear. Um, and there's a couple more things to calculate. <clears throat> um, but generally that's where you would go. That's where you'd start. Um, once you get used to this sort of thing, doing the two stat bonuses and filling that in, like we did here with Fleet and Gamble, etc., with his muscle skill or power wit or whatnot, then creating a character takes like 10 minutes. Getting the gear, I mean, gear, you know, you, uh, that, that takes as long as it takes you, but, but actually creating the gist of the character takes 10 minutes and a tiny bit of math, effectively. So... That's sort of where I'm at, and I don't mind math in games. Uh, I know a lot of people do, but I do not. Um, I played Hero System, for God's sake, for years. So so this is where we are. So we got Werdna, who's a little bit of an athlete. He gambled a little bit at the barracks. He knows, of course, all the typical shield guilds uh, enemies. He knows to keep his weapon in and, and armor in good repair, and, you know, generally is capable at marching and drilling and all those things that soldiers are asked to do day to day. Uh, he's survived in the woods specifically, but he is an outdoorsman now. Um, you know, maybe hiring so himself out as a tracker or a guide or a hunter uh, to lead people through, you know, woods, wooded terrain. Um, probably uses the spear mainly with this keep away. <clears throat> and uh, and a shield. So there you go. That is Werdna. And I think that's good enough for now. We will... Uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll do a couple more episodes and talk about some other bits and, and bobs as we go. And I'll probably try to have like a combat demo at some point so that we can see this uh, all this stuff in action. So thank you for indulging me. I know, I mean, hearing about someone else's game is not super exciting, but this is where we're at. This is what we're playing right now. And I will talk to you all later. Thank you.